Um, you want to feel it seal against the O-ring. There's a lot of volume in that tire. Now how do you know what PSI to put it up, pull it up to? Higher, although I generally right. like them nice and hard. It will say on the tire, it's personal preference. Some people like them soft, some people like them hard. If you're planning on going over gravel, you probably want a little bit softer. If you're riding off the road, you probably want a little bit harder. Um, sometimes it only says on one side. I know it does say on this side. It's right here. But feel it too. Yeah. I mean, I think I was only putting 40 in, and it feels pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's As long as it's not super crooked. As long as it's not super crooked. Yeah, it's crooked. Yeah, they're very here. This part is supposed to spin independently and sometimes it doesn't. Like a garden. What are you thinking? Well, I want to make sure that it's, it's lined up at this point. Okay, so those are the limiting screws. And what is, this would be uh, high. Correct. Now, sometimes you can't always tell just by looking at the screw. Sometimes, you know, that might be adjusted correctly. And the only way to tell is to shift it up. Because it out. looks in line. Okay. So the high end clearly then is fine. So go ahead and shift up to the low end. on one. Okay. Uh, so what do you think that might be an issue for? Well, I remember last time you said sometimes there are you know, different numbers of uh, sprockets here that are on the dial. And you said uh, you don't need to worry about it. Right. Uh, now, in this situation, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you that that's not the issue that we're looking at right now. Um, it is true that if you have incompatible equipment, um, right? If you have, for example, uh, an eight-speed shifter with an eight-speed derailleur with a six-speed freewheel cassette, um, then what's going to happen is you are going to be able to reach the full range of gears. But what you're going to find is that maybe the indexes of shifting are going to be smaller than you would want, right? So you might shift once, and it will shift once. Then you might shift a second time, and it won't shift, but it will almost shift. 
it'll shift a third time, and it'll then shift to the second cog, and then maybe almost try to go up to the third one, but not, but not actually go, right? And then you'll go to the fourth shift, and it'll go up to the third cog and be fine. And then you'll go up to the fifth shift, and maybe it'll go up to the fifth cog and be fine. Then you'll go up to the sixth shift, and maybe then it just won't go up to the, the sixth cog. And then you go to the seventh shift, and then it will. And then you have to lock it out of the eighth. So, you see what I'm saying though? Yeah. It's, it's not about the, the different um, compatibility, the, the incompatibility is not going to affect the range of ability to shift. It's going to affect the indexes between the shifting. So, okay. well, now that we know that, think about, think about how a derailleur works. You've got a cable, you've got a spring. If it won't shift up, the cable is not tight enough. So what's it not doing? Okay, let me just first the, the obvious thing to me was this seems to reach the end of its sure, range here. Sure. This is on one. Okay. And uh, so maybe try and uh, go to the other extreme range. Okay. This is this make sure, trigger. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're covered. It's sorry. It's the other trigger. The fourth trigger. Okay. Keep going. Just go all the way. Shift a whole bunch of times until it won't click anymore. Okay, now check out the cable. Problem identified. So do you remember, I, I know it was kind of getting on towards the end of it uh, last time, um, but do you remember the process in which you go about adjusting a cable? Um, it's you know, it's I pretty would, simple. But okay. Uh, I would, uh, well, you could... Right. And that is how you actually physically tighten the cable. And that's what we're going to do. But before you do that, you want to make sure that this is on the most relaxed position. Okay? So once that's in the most relaxed position, then you're going to tighten the cable. Uh, you want to be careful. We're not going to use the fourth hand. We're not going to use it in this situation because when you pry against the derailleur, if you tighten the cable while you're prying, then you're tightening the cable, you're tightening the, the derailleur uh, in an already unrelaxed position. Okay. I remember you saying that you know the right amount is look at this and want it to get tight without it. You want it to be, yeah. You want it to be as tight as you can get it without moving the derailleur. So just go ahead and loosen up that cable clamp. Get a good loose. It's probably good. Pull on that cable. Yeah. Just pull it tight, 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 and then tighten the cable clamp down again. Seems like. Yeah. You just want to be careful not to. Sure. You know, it's not going to break anything, even if it has. Just tighten it down and see how it did. Go ahead and give it just a little bit harder time. Just to make sure the cable's not going to slip. Cool. Now, try shifting through the range of, of gears after having done that. Uh, cool, so that just went up twice. Try it again, just do one flip. With the thumb lever, you can actually go more than one flip. Yeah, I felt right. like I went two there. Yeah, you do. So try and do just one flip. Okay. Cool. Good. Next one. Good. Alright. Keep going. Perfect. Keep going. Perfect. Done. Perfect. Give it just another click. To... All right. That went off. Last problem identified. How do you fix that? Well, I would uh, take the tension off here. Lift this. So the the best way to do that is to just downshift one and then turn the crank. 
with the, the finger. It's gonna be the finger one. Yeah, just downshift one, just one. Either way, yeah. Whenever you shift, you always wanna try it. Cool, okay, so now we're back up there. Okay, give it enough of a shift with your finger, with your thumb, sorry, to get it back up onto that inner cog without shifting it off. Maybe give it just a little bit more. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. Um, so we need to look at low range. The low end limiting screw. Absolutely. That is how you fix that problem. Eyeball it. Um, so here's what you're trying to do. When you adjust the, high, the low end, when you adjust any limiting screw, you need the derailleur to be in that position. Okay? It's not quite clear. It's so not we're just going to go ahead and shift it all the way up. Okay. So it should be more or less in line because it's actually on there. Because it's actually on the cog, the wheels are going to be in line. But now without turning the crank and rotating the system, we're going to shift it as far as it will go. Okay? So now you see how... Right. Right. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to... Okay, I cannot read which is the uh, upper screw. The, the low, low end is the bottom one. Usually they they make sense like that. Sometimes they don't. It, it'll work. You just have to push on it. Okay. Okay. And just keep turning it, keep turning it until you see you'll see the derailleur move. And just keep turning it until the wheels are in line. You are going in the right direction. I'll show you a trick that I use. When I adjust limiting screws, I like to hold the derailleur like this. Turn it that way. Then you're pushing in, sorry, pushing against each other. And uh, you keep bonking heads. And uh, and as you adjust it, you'll see it go in. Sometimes it's really hard to do these, to, to screw these in. This one's got a lot of friction on it. Did you see how it's lined up now? That looks so different from the way we started. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and unscrew this all the way out. Keep watching the derailleur. See that? Yeah. Yeah. So you see the difference? See now it's over here. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing, this is a, a six-speed freewheel cassette with an eight-speed derailleur. So what we're doing is right here, if this had seven, this would be where you wanted it because you'd have an extra cog on the inside here. But it doesn't have seven, it has six. So what we have to do is we have to lock this, we have to lock the low end limit out of being able to reach that position. This, to be fair, this is a pretty difficult limiting screw to screw in. I don't really know why. Sometimes they're easier than others. Then you just screw it in until it more or less lines up. And then once it's lined up,